Well, good morning, guys. Welcome back to Poor Boy's Little Homestead. As always, if this is your first time here, thanks for dropping in. Feel free to drop in anytime you feel, my friend. Guys, it's an old, cold, dreary day today, and I'm just sitting outside here enjoying me a little heat with my heater. Gonna show y'all my new little setup out here. For you who've been following me along, y'all know I have my little propane tank heater set up out here, and I'll try to attach you a picture of it right here. But the little propane heater, it worked great, but you had to use just a little small pieces of wood and steady putting wood in it. Well, lo and behold, I came across an old insert here. This is an old insert out of a fireplace. It was in an old abandoned home. A fella told me if I got it out of there, I could have it. Well, I brought this fire insert home and I have really been enjoying it. I don't know how old this is. It's a craft brand. C R A F T brand. Got vents right here, but what I like about this insert, and y'all see I had to do a little modification here because on the top up there it has a three inch, I think it was 13 or 15 inch long slot there to that's where you dampen their clothes. Close it to the off right there and you can open it. But I had to take a little piece of metal and set a bind. They sell the ones that go converts it from there to a six inch pipe. But in the fireplace, it had the little side panels right here that filled up your holes on each side of your insert to your firebox. So I took one of them and tack welded it to the top. Done me a little engineering there and created my own fitment to make it convert down to a six inch pipe. And what y'all see right there, that's that supposed to be high heat sealant. I just put that around there so when it rains, cause this is sitting outside, try to keep water from going seeping in there. But what I really love about this heater, this heater came with a blower attached to the side. Now, how it originally worked, you had a blower box, and you would set it out on your hearth in your house, and it would suck the warm air and blow it, and it'd come out these vents here, making hot air, because it's double walled inside this insert. Well, the old blower motor was out. But I had a squirrel cage motor here, but just 12 volt, runs off a of battery. And I come up with me away and I put it right on there to where that blower motor originally attached. And what I did, you didn't want your motor, since I'm outside, you don't want your motor sucking cold air, you want it sucking warm air, just like if it was in a house. Well, this insert is sitting about eight inches off the ground on two cinder blocks. So what I did, I closed that in up under the bottom and I took a piece of flex pipe, and that's that metal dryer flex pipe, and it goes up under that heater in that enclosed spot. So that's hot air under there. So now my return air is sucking hot air, and then it's blowing in here, and in return blowing out even hotter air. Like I said, this is just a 12 volt. It don't blow as hard as the one that come on it. But you can sit here, my friends, and it blows that hot air way out here, coming out of them vents. So if you ever come across an old insert that you can get your hands on, it makes a great heater even for outside, especially if you got one with this blower. Like I said, you can set the little table up over here and people around the table and it's blowing that hot air right under that table. It really works great. Now for 
right now I just got my battery sitting over here to the side. And it'll probably stay that way because the only time I use the blower is when anybody else is out here sitting around. That way you can blow heat out on them. Most of the time I'm sitting out here, I leave the doors open because I like looking at the fire burning. Now I got some old wood in there right now that ain't won't burn good. It's a little damp. But you can see when you open the door, the smoke comes back out, which I guess that's going to do that on any heaters. But I just wanted to show y'all what you can do if you come across an old insert. It ain't got to be an insert if it's just an old wood stove out of an old house or somewhere that somebody ain't using. You can set it up outside and use it like this. But if you come across one with that blower on it, it's really nice for outside. So that's my new little setup for my heater. Y'all see I put my little cage around the back of it. I don't want my little grandson come running up from the back. Touch it. I can kind of keep him off of it as long as I'm around here in the front. He's, he's done got a little faster than Papa, so I had to put up a fence to keep him from running up there at the back because I sure don't want him to run up there and grab that and burn himself. But you can just, after you get a good fire going and your wood's burning down good, load it up with wood, close your dampener in there off just a little bit, close your vents there out. You go on and do your work, whatever you want to do. You come back, you can open the doors up, turn your vent on. You can just sit here, heat coming off of it anyway. Warm your hands when you're outside working when it's cold. I just like the little setup. Now, I ain't tried cooking nothing on top of this one yet. I mean, it gets hot enough, you could probably cook something, slow cook something. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you could fry it. Now, you might, you might could put a flat griddle up there and leave it and let it get hot enough and then cook something. I'm gonna test that out one day just to see, just playing, but I got plenty of ways to cook. Y'all been seeing on other videos. But that right there is my little heater. Take y'all and give y'all a little shot around the back. That's what it looks like set up from the back. You can see down there at the very bottom where I was telling you them two cinder blocks on each side and then I closed it off with a piece of metal. It's kind of like an oven under there. That's where that vent pipe goes where it sucks that return air. a close-up of the squirrel cage fan. Like I said, that ain't the one that came with it. The one that come with it's in a box about the size of that battery sitting there. But the motor was out on it, and I already had that old motor there off of something I'd saved. Don't get out of there. Don't get out of there, she's eating. There's the six little American blue rabbits. They're about seven weeks old today. And with my rabbits, Kelly had. He had seven, but one of them died when it was born. But they really growing and doing good. They're gonna be tough rabbits, cause coasting my man. He gets out here, he's a little rough with them when he's playing with them. The Colton ain't here with us today. But 
That's a little update on the American Blue Rabbits. Like I said, they about seven weeks old. Trying to find them new homes. The ones that don't get new homes is going to end up getting a new home in the deep freeze. Except one of them. One of them I want to keep and get, have me another buck coming along. Now I'm going to show y'all my buck over here. After he's getting older, he's got too much of the, he ain't keeping this natural blue grayish color. He's getting brown coming out in him. And where that's coming from is how these rabbits was bred. Ever so often, you're going to get some that that's going to start showing back up in. Well, I'm going to get me a breeder book that don't have that to try to keep that out of them. I'm going to just keep them blue and gray just like them right there are. But that's old Kelly right there. That's the mother of the six little ones over here we just looked at. And this is Gwen and her three babies. they going on, I think, around four weeks old now. You can see how pretty they are. Just the bluish gray color. Old Gwen right here. Old pretty girl. And that's Gwen Safani. So she had four and one of hers died when it was born. It was very cold when they was born. And then we get down here to Blake. He's the dad of all of them. This is old Blake, named after Blake Shelton. But you can see. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to put him back. I don't like being held, but y'all can see the brown. Blotches of brown. And they say that comes out because of how them rabbits were bred. Sometimes you'll get some white comes out in them. But that's why I'm wanting another buck so I can try to keep that bread out of them. But this was the first buck I had. And I didn't get the hand picking. I didn't have no choice. So I'm starting out with him. Now the first rabbit him and Gwen had over here. I kept. This is a buck. And I'm gonna look at some of them Kelly had over there. And they look like they bigger than this one per year. I'm gonna keep one of them, but I'm keeping this one right here right now. He'll be my buck rabbit. Oh, he's pretty and ain't got none of that brown or nothing in him. He's just a blue gray color. Like I said, he's about, I think 12, 13 weeks old right now. But he ain't as big as a rabbit. I don't think he's going to be as big. That's why I'm just keeping him. And then I'm going to look at some of them Kelly head over there. And if they look like I got a bigger buck, that will make a bigger, healthier, stockier buck. Then i keep one of them. But i just been keeping him for the time being. Actually, I've been looking for another American Blue buck within reasonable driving distance and I can't find nobody's got any. I'd like to have another one that's out of a different bloodline than my doe. So if you watching this and you anywhere near Northeast Louisiana and you got some American blues, whether they registered, pedigreed, non-pedigreed, mine's non-pedigreed, I'd like to start it. If I ever get me a good book, then I might start doing that. And over time, then I end up with some pedigree rabbits. But if you're anywhere in a reasonable distance of northeast Louisiana and you know where I can get a good American blue breeder book, shoot me a comment below. Now, right now, the only quills I got is my breeder quills. And this time of year, they ain't laying no eggs. Let's see what I got. I got 
a male and two females there, a male and two females there, and a male and four females down fizzing. Next year, I think I'm gonna get me some of them jumbo wilds raised. Now you can't go nowhere. But that's a conternix. Uh-oh. The guys, I had to go chase him down. He got away from me. But that's a conternix tuxedo quail. And just like breeding anything, sometimes when they hatch out, they'll be solid brown and stuff, and you just have to weed them out as you meet birds. And you try to keep that pattern there when you keep breeding over and over to keep your true tuxedo colors. Now they have a name for these right here and that's all they are is tuxedo. They all the same bird, but the different color patterns they name differently. And I can't remember what they call these. But see, they ain't got the dark brown, they lighter brown. So I was gonna breed these and try to see if I can get that to come out lighter. Just for prettiness. Here's a young one I kept from the last batch. You can see it's a lot lighter color. Like I said, they got a name they call that. These here was my originals I started with. This here's the male right here. And guys, on these birds, the only way you can tell male from female is vent check them. And to vent check them, you put your finger right below their vent. And this time of year is a bad time to do it because it's cold weather. But during when they lay in eggs and stuff, you can put your finger right there. You see that. I don't know if y'all can see it, but y'all see that white foam come out? You just put your finger right below his vent and give it a little press. And white foam looking stuff comes out. Not white poo poo, white foam looking stuff. Then that's the male. That's the only way you can sex conternix, the white ones. Now the white quails and tuxedos and such, but now your browns, you can sex them by looking at their chest colors. Here's my chickens, they still doing good. Now I got a light in the, about a roost in there, it comes on about two hours before daylight, so I'm still getting five to six eggs a day. But something's got in here the other day, which I know what it was. I ended up catching three possums, and they killed one of my white Japanese hens and my little uh, sea bright, the golden sea bright I had. One of them died, and then the other one, I guess the possum got him too. But I caught three possums. I was thinking it was coons, but it ended up, I guess, being possums. But I ain't figured out exactly, ain't no holes in the fence, so I don't know if the possum up there on the roost, one of them was sitting too close to the fence, and he reached in there and grabbed it and killed it, then started eating it through the fence. That's the only thing I can figure out. This little rooster right there, that's as big as he gonna get. That's one of them little mini bantams. You see the other one over there is a bantam. He's bigger than the Japanese bantam. I got one more rooster down there. I'm waiting to see if he gets his full grown age. I'm gonna see what he looks like. And I don't know if I'm gonna keep the little mini bantam. But I gotta get rid of one of them. I just want three little roosters. And then these older red hens right here. Next year, I'll weed them out and get some Every year, get me like three more hens, young hens. 
so I can keep keep fresh hens and keep them rotated out. I really don't like these. Now that big one right there is a Rhode Island Red. But these other four right here, that's what they call them sex links. That's between a Rhode Island Red and a white leg horn. I really don't like them. I, I like keeping the Rhode Island Red or just a white leg horn or something like that. Now them two blue ones that are, that's a sex link breed they come out with breeding. I don't forget what they cross with. But I got them just cause of their blue color. They laying good, but I probably won't get no more sex links. But guys, that's just a little update on the homestead. I was wanting to show my heater set up there and give you a little update on the animals. And hope you enjoyed the video and what's going on. I give you a little shot of the garden out here because ain't much in the garden. But there's a little update on the garden. We got our Brussels sprouts, a cauliflower, and a cabbage, lettuce, and three different kinds of kale, and some turnip greens and mustard greens. That's about all that's growing in the garden right now. And you see I got frost cover on them because we've been getting some hard. Matter of fact, a couple mornings it was more than a frost it was a freeze so i keep them covered i don't know if the brussels sprouts is going cauliflower going to make anything just depends on what our weather does and you never know what our weather is going to do but the kale and the lettuce turnip greens mustard greens they all been doing good we've been eating on them That's about all that's going on in the garden. But guys, like I said, I just want to give y'all a little quick update on what's going to happening on the homestead. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me any comments below. If you know anybody near within reasonable driving distance of Northeast Louisiana, got any American blue rabbits, I'd like to have an American blue buck or a breeder buck. And if you, within reasonable driving distance of my homestead, and would like American Blue Bunny, I got six ready to go and three more ready shortly, looking for a new home. So just leave a comment below and we can connect through emails and make a plan. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day. God bless. See y'all next time.